people are basically coming to a sense of desperation about the way, they live, about the way their their parents live, and the way they were taught. Yeah, well, I think that the whole system that the the economy is built on a consumption thing, where you make just enough money to buy just the things that the magazines and the newspapers advertise and the radio advertises, and enough to pay your bills, and enough to be a little bit in the hole, so you have to go back and keep the cycle, keep keep working, and keep paying, and keep working, and keep paying. And you never can really get ahead. It's not designed for you to get ahead. It's designed to keep itself going, you know. And if you want to get out of it, if you're not happy in it, well, the thing to do is to stop, drop out, just for a minute, even, just for, like Timothy Leary's whole trip was drop out. You know, what he meant was, like, to back up and look at what's happening, look at this perpetuate system that you're caught in, and see that as long as you participate in it, you're caught in it, and that as soon as you stop participating in it, you're free of it, you're free of it, you're above it. And so a bunch of us met out here in the Slocan Valley, who all did the same thing, basically. We finally just said, fuck it, I can't make any money. And, or, I got a little money, and maybe I'll be able to get something. And so we all came here and uh, found ourselves together. And the first thing that we had to agree on was that we probably couldn't make it by ourselves anyway, so we might as well make a circle of energy and try to make a family. And to try to apply all those things that we learned in, in the years of process that brought us to this place in making something that would be permanent, that would work, that we could raise our children in, that we could, you know, like have a life commitment to. And so we began. We put our money in the one bank account. And all of the things that we did became family rather than individual. If we bought a car or if we buy a truck or if we buy land or whatever we do, it's a family question, that, that whole economic thing. If we need money, if we need food, you know, it's like, it's a question of the survival of the hive rather than just an individual member of the hive. And so we, we decided that we needed to get a place to live. So with the money that we had, we bought this farm. And then we didn't have any money for two years. And somehow it just keeps coming because we keep putting out energy to help people as they come and, and we share everything that we've got with anyone that will come and that's the law of karma what you put out that's what you get back you know? and you can live that way you know that's like you beat the system that way in a sense um, if you have it in mind to to get and you're thinking about getting your energy is I need this I want this I need this I want this then you're in the consumer bag again. You're just not losing money. But if you don't worry about it, if you just put your energy out, put your energy out, and trust, trust in the energy of your circle, trust in God, trust in the land, then you'll make it. You'll make it. If you can be honest with each other. If you can put aside yourself for the interests of the group. Have, you, have there been any problems since you got started with that thing of trusting people when you started? Well, there's four of us that are members of this family right now. And the four of us have been together since the beginning, and there's been maybe 30 others who have come and have gone who, you know, sort of tried to fit in and didn't fit in. We were six, and then we were nine, and then we were 25, and then we were 15, and then we were 12, and then we were eight, and then we were six, and now we're four. And yeah, so, you, well, the babies, the children, sure. And people come and, you know, there's the, all these very basic things of how do you live? What kind of a diet do you have? Um, I get $200 in the mail. Who, what, do I, what, what do we use it for? I want to take a trip to Toronto. Yeah, but we need honey and oil. <laughs> but I want to take a trip to Toronto. But we need honey and oil. It's our money. <laughs> money is pretty basic, you know. But it gets it gets really deeper, down more basic levels than that. Um, loving each other, trusting each other. Um, someone is unhappy, then it's 
everyone's concerned. And you have to deal with an unhappiness because, well, suppose that we are a family. This group right here is a family. And Bob is not able to feel part of the things that are happening, but he's here. Here he is sitting in front of us, and here he is in the circle. You know? Well, that energy of him maybe feeling separate is going to like, um, it weakens us. We can the whole chain, and his off energy is like playing two notes alongside each other on a piano, and it's a discord, you know. And we have to be able to make our circle big enough to take him in, no matter where he is, no matter how far out he goes, you know. We have to be able to make it big enough. Otherwise, we end up having cliques, units, smaller units, you know, and they will, each faction or each clique, will have its own interests, its own you know, vested interests, as it were. And there will become conflicts between the cliques. And then you have exactly the same thing as you got out there in the rest of the world. So the whole question of the unity of the family has to be dealt with and preserved. You know, probably it's the most important thing, the question of unity. You have to have a vision that you share together. You have to agree that we're one and that we're family. That we're going to stay that way no matter what happens. I'm going to love you no matter what happens, no matter who says, no matter what you do. And you're going to love me no matter what I do or what I say. That we're committed to each other. And we're going to work it through and we're going to keep going no matter what happens. And people will come and people will go and problems will come and problems will go. But always that vision is held in the center. It's like the light. The, the energy that we all share together is love. And it flows around in a circle and it makes a light. And that light is God. It's our leader. And then the light goes out, it's because the energy stops. When the energy stops, we have to find out why. We have to make it work. Do you have trouble with new people when they come in here? Is it because... Well, you know, just because, you know, I'm you know, on the side of the path, you know, do we want more people? Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what to tell them. You know, you want to be nice, you want to be hospitable same time. Yeah, because, you know, there's, there's some people that will just come and you know, you know, park and if you don't tell them anything, they'll still be there. <laughs> you know, next time you look. <laughs> you, know, you have a lot of trouble with that in the summer? Yeah, during the summer. When a lot of people come, it really make last summer we got kind of mixed up because everybody that came down the park, we let them be a member of the family, you know. Yeah. And so everybody had an equal share in the decision making and the money spending. And God, we spent like five thousand dollars in three months. And we, I don't know, it just came and it went, you know. A, I don't know where it went. We bought some oh, rubber hose with it. <laughs> and and the family, the whole question of who was the family, didn't really get established again from April until September. We didn't know who the family was. And we didn't even hardly talk to each other, you know, because there was just. 19 people in between us. <laughs> and so you have to decide on who you are when you begin. And then if someone else comes in, then that's fine. Then we include these new people. But we can't include everybody. You know. Someday this on this earth we will include everybody. But we are not high enough yet. Yeah. I think that we've reached a time when we can include more than two. <laughs> No. <laughs> you know, well, like our parents <laughs> believe that, that, that we can only include, include two and then the children. The children oh, don't really yeah, come. Yeah. You know, the children aren't part of the family, they're the children. The children have nothing to do with the decision process. What do you think is going to happen then, this summer, when you have people coming in here that, that want to stay? How will you handle that? Probably we'll put them to work. If they work good, we'll let them stay for until the summer's over. They will totally. <laughs> no. That sounds good. Get that down. Get that down. <laughs> right. You got any money? Fine. <laughs> Grandfathers do that too. Yeah. See, last summer was complicated because there was people staying here. Telling anybody that came up there that they couldn't stay. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. You know, and so, you know, couldn't, you know,
tell somebody they couldn't stay, you know, like they let me the last one down. You know, can I stay? Sure, you can stay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of energy just to keep your own space straight. You know, yeah, yourself. you really find. You know, how did you get out of that? The house we had You just waited for the other people. them all away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's exactly what we did. We just wished and wished and wished and prayed and prayed. And said, Dear God, please make them go away. <laughs> they all went away, every one of them. And there we were again. And then you got, uh, your group sort of was just left and, and got that back together again. It sounds like, uh, was, did you have meetings while these large group of people were here from the... Infinitely. Yeah. Daily. <laughs> Often, at any rate. And, you know, it was really good. Everyone that was here really wanted to be here, you know. They didn't know how. Not everybody was supposed to be here. But it was a process of unraveling that a lot of people learned from. We learned a lot. And the family meetings oftentimes dealt with huge emotional crisis. This one's marriage is breaking up. This one's uh, schizophrenia was coming out. <laughs> this one um, couldn't get it on in bed. And that was a basic problem. Uh, this one had some money and he didn't want to give it up. All the very basic things that, in order to live like the way we want to live, you have to be able to empty yourself of yourself. And if you can do that, or if you can do that a little bit even, then love comes in. And when love comes in, everything works. Because you're up floating above all the problems. You just ride over it like a glide machine, you know. But all those people last summer, weighed us down because <laughs> we weren't there were so many that you couldn't you know it was like when we had family meetings I remember sometimes I really when I would speak at a meeting it was you know like how you get nervous in your stomach when you speak before a group <laughs> this is my family fellas right you know, and I'd have to think about what I was going to say and organize it you know Tell them what you're going to tell them. Tell them and then tell them what you told them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was sort of, you know, took all your energy to keep your own space and head together. You know, too much. Too much. So, or, you know, it was impossible to do anything with the group. How successful do you think the group meetings were? Well, they were, they were okay, you know, because that was you know, how we got rid of a lot of Call me and say, well, I feel family with you and you and you. I'm like, gee, guys, I'm here. Like, well, you would have to split. <laughs> it's really important to keep talking to each other, you know. If, you're, if you aren't able to speak with each other, then... Then there's this wall <laughs> that stops the energy from going around. And it, that, it wouldn't matter if we had enough ge geographical space, like buildings, houses, for more people to be here, if we could keep the energy going. You know? But, you know, we have to, just between, you know how hard it is, just between you guys, just to keep it loving all the time. <coughs> Even if you fall down one second. You let the, if you hold on to that second, it becomes two, and then it becomes three, and then it becomes an hour, and then a day, maybe. You know, with, all this, with the group, it's multiplied. It's it's hard to live with a couple. Think how hard it is to live with, you know, a four marriage or a six marriage. You know, that's what it is, really. It's a marriage. You know, you, know, you were talking before about how. A lot of groups fail. And why do a lot of groups fail? But think about how many marriages fail. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's not and then the people go on and they have another relationship and then maybe it fails. And then maybe they'll have the third one it'll work for a while. Well the same is with communes. I think people move from group to group to group and then finally they find somebody that they can make it with. Mm -hmm.
Peggy donkey stick. <laughs> Mick, we're working on fences. <laughs> no, I mean, some of the things you're working on right now are... The, the the, the, you got some. Yeah. We're here to work. So let's see, what else? We're building a house up there. There's a tree house over there. Out of logs. <coughs> and uh, the garden. And you make balsamers. Mm -hmm. I'm going to carve a Buddha. The size of a man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's going to look like a donkey. <laughs> With the tail of a snake. Totem Buddha. Yeah. Firewood. We're, we're really work on firewood. Yeah, last winter, around uh, the end of December, we ran out because we were so busy having family meetings that we didn't cut firewood, <laughs> dealing with all the problems and all the people. And so, um, at that point, just at that point, um, one of the couples broke up. One guy's left. The girl was here. And so there was, so there was, there was him and me and three girls. And he went off to see if he could get work. So it was me and three girls. So he didn't get work. He just went for a vacation. So he came back in there. Anyway, we were climbing up that mountain and there was five feet of snow. And we were bringing down green fir logs from firewood. And, you know, you, you may be able to get two and a half days wood for a whole day's work climbing around. And it was cold and it was hard work. And one by one, they all left. <laughs> and there was us again. That was the end. Yeah. It, as soon as the, we, we were just the four of us again, somehow it was really easy. The firewood getting. Stay together. Doesn't stay together. Yeah, it flakes away. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take to build the roof? Well, of solid work, I'd say about three weeks. About 15 years. <laughs> no. Long than that. Took how long? Well, they were, we were working on it from March. You know, it's different, different times, different sort of different ideas we had about what it was going to be. And, who was going to live in it, and what it was going to be for, and stuff. So, and then there was a space of time where nobody cared about it, and it laid dormant for two months. You know, so, I don't know, between March and September, it got built. Mm. And lots of people worked on it. Mm. How do we get on sexually? We're the oh. baby. We're celibate. <laughs> no, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be an issue. What doesn't? Sexual. How do we get along sexually? Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a problem. We just. No. Sexual desires not from one of our standpoint. <laughs> yeah, we don't. No. We don't fuck very much, you know. I guess. God. You know, like sexual energy is basically creative energy. The same energy that Shelley wrote his poetry with, he made love to his women with. And when he wasn't able to make love to his women, is because he had been writing so much that he just wiped out. You know, read, read the story of Shelley's life. You know, many artists are like that because that's the basic life force energy is utilized in, in, in the sexual act. And that same energy is con is is utilized in in uh, meditation. In creating, Higher, in, in achieving higher levels of consciousness. You know, so you get to a certain place where you have the choice of you, how you're going to use your energy, what you want to use it for today. You know, and if you want to use it sexually, well, fine. But then it's you that's good. Some groups are really, like, the, there are other other families in this valley that are more deal with the sexual issue like one group actually goes around trade on partners every night or every two days or something like that where they just trade around 
you know. They like it. Everybody, it's within the family circle, and you know, it's okay. That's the arrangement they have with each other. That's their trip, you know. Um, right? As long as it stays within the family. As soon as it gets out, outside the family, then there's going to be fear and jealousy and things like that, you know. Yeah, I'm surprised that there's fear and jealousy doesn't matter in even in, in the family situation, depending on on who are I guess who are. Sure, it does. I mean, it does. Yeah. It does. It does. Yeah. It's one of the more basic things you have to deal with. Another, another problem that you know re really related to that is the women's well, women's rights, women's liberation. That's the thing. Uh, the women really. When you live in this lifestyle, if the women did all the things that the women were supposed to do, and the men did all the things that the women, men were supposed to do, classically or traditionally, um, the women would never see out of doors. You know? Yeah. It just wouldn't be fair. There's an overemphasis in the women's liberation movement on separation, just like in black power. You know, where we are women and we have our rights. So we are black and we are strong. Instead of we are people and let's work it out together. You know, let's love each other together. But there's really a lot to be to be learned and it's very easy to fall into that same old pattern that my mother was into, you know. Or my mother and father together were into out here. You know, like we're products of that culture. You know, it's hard to escape it. You know, you have to be on your toes all the time. This one coming here now. He was born in January. King Ripachi. King Ripachi. His name is Akasha. Akasha means uh, the place where God lives, the basic material out of which the whole universe is created. If you boil everything down to its most basic thing, it comes to spirit. And that whole pervading spirit is Akasha. There he is. <laughs> 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 well, he's just um, neutral. He's not um, he's not involved. He's reached a level of not involved. Unless you be as <laughs> what? Unless you be as little children, you now shall not. You know? When he was born, it was really a family event. Everyone was around the bed, and I got to deliver with my own hand. That was really hard. And everybody was up two o'clock in the morning, bright eyed. And, uh, it was tremendous. He came out of the world. Hi! Is <laughs> 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 I heard you had a uh, christening for him um, back in February or January. Yeah, we had a, a name giving ceremony where everybody came and brought a, a gift that represented a gift, a spiritual gift that they had. Power, empowerment gift. You know, first, he was one of us was chosen as a priest to kind of represent the, all the people who channel their, their divine energy into this one person. You know. And he entrusted the child to us, you know, to take care of for God for a while, because it's not our child; it's God's child. And then uh, everybody gave gifts. Um, one gift was a cougar tooth that he might have the courage of a cougar. And one was. Uh, Prism that he might know perfect light. And one was 
up a little wooden cross that he might know it from Jesus. You know, one was some leather moccasins that he might walk with grace, you know, and you know, sensitivity upon our mother of the earth. And just gift after gift, people put down and said, made these, these offerings. So we're making them like a, you know the fool's card in the tarot? There's this guy with a motley costume and stick with a little round handkerchief and he's walking off the edge of a cliff. And he's just blithe and happy and he's walking off the edge of a cliff because he's pure innocence and he has so much faith that he won't hurt himself. And that's the meaning of the card. And, or one of the meanings. You know, anyway, we, he got a, a walking stick, a really a beautiful, tall, straight U stick. And we're making one of those things with all his gifts in them. And the day he leaves home, we'll give it to him. <laughs> What about our kids? Yeah. Uh, so we make a lifestyle like this. Well, the Hutterites made a lifestyle and they forced their kids, in a sense, to live that way because they won't let them go to other schools. Mm -hmm. What are our children going to want to do? You know, we think about that. I think that we're an embryo. I mean, where we're at now, our kids are going to be just so far out comparatively. So far out. You know, like we're just the beginning. We're learning our lesson. We're a bridge between ages, the, the Piscean age and the Aquarian age. Yeah. If we live our lives pure, we make a good, strong bridge for our children to walk across to the Aquarian age, the age of life. Yeah. I think that's what's happening. It's going to be different. It's not going to be like us, but it's not going to be like before us either, because we're in such a tremendous change time.